In this final video of the Features section, we'll see how to configure GeoIP lookups directly from Nginx. First off, to enable this module, you will have to tell Nginx to include it by specifying the flag with HTTP GeoIP module, as we did with the MP4 module. Now, should you run your configuration and get the following error, you can install the missing dependency by running apt-get install libgeoip-dev or the equivalent of whichever package manager you're using on your server. Once that's done, we can configure the Nginx build with the GeoIP flag. Run that. Make. And install. Running Nginx capital V will confirm that our Nginx install now includes the GeoIP module. So we can reload the configuration and start configuring the GeoIP module. To use the GeoIP module, we'll first need to download the MaxMind GeoIP database, and for that I'll create a new directory on the server at slash etc slash nginx slash GeoIP. And I'll change into that directory, over to the browser, and we'll navigate to dev.maxmind.com, and a bit further down the page, select GeoLite Legacy Free Download. I'm using the legacy packages as they are arguably still the preferred choice for Nginx and match the documentation of the GeoIP module. The two databases I'm going to download is the GeoLite country and the GeoLite city. So I'll copy that download link, download the gzipped file to the GeoIP directory, unzip it using gunzip, then do the same for the city database. And there we have our two GeoIP database files. Now I'll switch over to the Nginx configuration file and just remove that rate limiting rule from a previous video. Then to configure GeoIP, we're going to tell Nginx where to find those database files. This is just done in the HTTP context, so it's available everywhere. First we'll say GeoIP underscore country and set that to slash etc slash Nginx slash GeoIP slash GeoIP.dat, which is that first database file we downloaded. And then the same for GeoIP underscore city, etc slash nginx slash GeoIP slash GeoLite city.dat. Switch over to the terminal, check that configuration, and something isn't right. Ah, just a typo in that first file name. Try again, and now everything looks fine, so I'll reload the configuration. Right, to use the GeoIP module, we'll have to specify what information we want, and to get a list of all the variables the module makes available, we'll head over to the documentation page. First, take a look at GeoIP country. This provides us with three variables, and to demonstrate, I'm going to use the GeoIP country name variable first. Back to the configuration file, and I'll create a new location block for slash geo underscore country. And to keep this simple, we'll just return a string with response code 200. And we'll say visiting from geo IP country name. Save that and reload. Head over to the browser and go to that URL. Geo underscore country. And we get visiting from South Africa, as that's where I'm recording this video and making the request from. If, however, we head over to the terminal and do a curl request from this DigitalOcean server, we get visiting from United Kingdom, as this is a London-based virtual machine. Okay, next I'll try the city database, and back on that documentation page, we can see just a bit further down is quite a few variables. In fact, using the city database, we can get everything from latitude and longitude, postal code, and city name, which we'll try as well. So change that URL to geo underscore city, change the variable to geo IP city, and reload. Now, unfortunately, my city is a bit more remote and isn't returned with this version of the city database, so I'll skip the browser. But if we do that curl request from the DigitalOcean server again, we get visiting from London. 
In a real-world scenario, you could of course use these variables in rewrites to serve location-specific content, pass them to a backend, or even apply restrictions based on location. The possibilities are quite endless, and overall, this is a very useful module to know.